Hi, Scott Sager with you from RTC TV 4. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of This Week on 4, brought to you by RTC. This Week on 4 is a celebration of all the great things that have just happened in this community, as well as a preview of those things to come. From arts to community events to sports and more, we've got you covered right here on RTC. And we're going to start out today's segment with Abby Malko doing a sports report. You'll see Abby doing these sports reports every week. She'll keep you updated as to how the teams are doing and how individual athletes from the schools are doing, as well as uh, the occasional interview. This week, Abby has Tim Wagner interviewing her father, Rob Malko, the new coach at Rochester High School. Let's take a look at the segment and the interview with Rob. Hello and welcome to RTC TV4 Sports Report. This week we are starting off with the players that were highlighted in the All Sentinel softball team. Winnemac had the most with seven players. Tippecanoe Valley was next with five. That includes Howard for pitching, the two Benton sisters for infield, Prater was on the catching list, and Yoder was an outfielder for Tippecanoe Valley. Congratulations to those girls. North Miami had three players. Rochester rounded out the list with four players. That included Musselman, the catcher, Elliott and Brown for infield, and Corey Rao for outfielders. Caston had two players. They were both infielders. One was Schultz and the other was Bachelor. And Argus had one on the team, and that was the outfielder, Dunlap. So congratulations to those girls for a successful softball season and making the all Sentinel softball team. Speaking of softball, the Rochester Lady Zebras hosted an alumni game this past week where the old folks came back to play from graduates from the years of 1992 to 2012 played against the current high school team. We were there to take some pictures along with Paula Beeler and Dee Brown, so we'll show you the slideshow coming up next. What a fun game and a great fundraising opportunity for the Lady Zebra softball team. We thank everyone involved for this successful night. Coming up next, we are talking to Coach Malco, who is the new head Zebra Boys basketball coach. He coached a few years ago and is now making a return. Our own Tim Wagner talked to him about why he stopped coaching and what he's looking forward to about coming back. Let's take a look. How's the summer been going so far? You know, it's been it's been a good summer. We started back in May at the end of school with open gyms a couple times a week and then we got into the month of June and continued that process and then last week we had a, a, a team camp here in Rochester where the guys came in to kind of you know hear the terminology and the philosophy that we wanted yeah. to employ and you know then we went up to D1 camp in Fort Wayne and and uh, we played some uh, some bigger schools like uh, Crown Point a couple times uh, Shelbyville wow. Um, and then we also played some schools and, you know, more our size, whether it was a Lewis Cass, a Knox. Um, and, you know, we, we started out, we, we took a beating the first three, four games, and, and uh, we started to turn a corner, and we finished uh, uh, the camp, uh, the five and two record, the last seven games. And, and I, saw, I saw a lot of growth with the kids. Just in that short amount of time. In, in just three days. And, you know, that's something that hopefully uh, when we get in here in November, we have more time. We'll hopefully be able to see this. Maybe not the growth would come that fast, but you know, 
the growth needs to be there on a daily basis, and that's what we want to do. Consistency is yeah. really a big part. Consistency of it, right? is a, everything. You know, whether uh, you're on the floor, or off the floor, the discipline is, is everything. And the you know, like I tell them, if you're not feeling good, you got to get to school. We got practice. We got yeah. things we got to do. I mean, there are people who go to work, and don't feel real good. Absolutely. There's a difference between not feeling good and being sick. Yeah. And uh, you know, identifying that and, and bringing that. Uh, mentality every day is what we want to try and do. It'll make a huge difference. I hope so. Yeah. What are you looking forward to most, do you think, about getting back to coaching and being here with the Zebras again? Well, I, I look forward to practices. Um, we, uh, you know, you got about 80 practices uh, in, in the course of November to March, and you, you, get, you get an opportunity to, to, again, see the growth. Uh, you look forward to those Friday night, yeah. Tuesday night, you know, Thursday night, Saturday night, whatever night we're playing, yeah. and, and taking that team that we're going to play and try and find the chinks in their armor mm -hmm. and then hopefully expose those yeah. and, and see the guys be able to go out and, and effectively execute the plan. So, again, the competition, um, that's what it's about. Uh, if, you, if you play, you know, at a level that – allows you to be competitive it, it doesn't leave your your system very easily no so that that's something that uh, i still have that that competitive uh feeling and i want to pass it on to the guys and i want them to to bring that on a daily basis try and teach them that you just don't come in on friday night and start you know play yeah. it's a 80 practice plus games you're looking over 100 nights in the winter that you got to bring it mentally and physically to compete it's a lot of work it's a lot of work it's a lot of sacrifice um, a lot of people want to say hey you know that I, I want to have fun and as I'm trying to help them understand there's it's more important to me that there's a satisfaction of a job well done yes uh, the fun comes if you win uh, a Friday night game or whatever night it is you go in the locker room and you celebrate that win for a short period of time that's the fun part yeah and then you get back to practice and you start grinding for the next you know opportunity um, but like I told them when they come in the locker room after practices um, they're gonna be sore they're, they're gonna be tired they're gonna be fatigued that's and, the point yeah and, and we want them to be better you know get, have gotten better that day and so hopefully then we can reach our goals uh, on a Friday night or whatever night we play. We were glad Tim was able to take out some time and talk to Coach Malco about the upcoming basketball season. The school year is just around the corner and we have a few new coaches to interview as well. Tune in next week to see RTC TV 4 Sports Report. Thanks to Tim and Abby for putting that piece together for us. We look forward to great things out of Rob Malco, again the coach of Rochester High School boys basketball. Next on This Week on 4, we have Brant Gerald with Tending to Art. Brant took the time to go down to Logan Sports to meet with local artist Adam Gundrum. Let's take a look. Hello and welcome to RTC TV4's Tending to Art. I'm your host, Brant Gerald. This week I caught up with Adam Gundrum to talk about some of his recent projects. Let's take a look. Adam, tell me a little bit about the local music scene and how it came to be here in Logan Sport. Well, um, I started in the local music scene when I was 15 or so, and uh, we had friends from high school from Caston that I grew up with, and we loved rock and roll, and we started playing rock and roll, and then we decided that we wanted to try to start getting shows in Logan Sport and other towns around us and just started talking to people and uh, got lucky with some different places that would invite local bands to play and from there we just kept playing for a long time and here we are today we have a nice record store here in town we have a few really cool all ages uh, music venues and places for people of all ages to come and enjoy music so it's it's been really cool it's been a nice nice growth it's and good. speaking of some of those projects let's talk about the space brain creative collective space brain space brain collective i can't even say it <laughs> that's okay uh, <laughs> yeah the space brain collective is um uh a label that uh, my friend brian and carmen and i started and uh so we basically put out 
um, different bands of this area and our kind of main focus of it is to have a really out of the ordinary artistic uh, way to present music instead of it just being a plain recordable CD and a paper sleeve you know we have screen printed sleeves from cheapy squeegee and all kinds of different stuff cheapy that we, squeegee yeah, yeah cheapy squeegee <laughs> they they make uh, this shirt and they do very nice screen printing Shane and Janae are awesome um, but yeah we uh, we try to put art with the music and make it more of a uh, a cool package to look at as far as a cool package to listen to. It's interesting because actually I feel like the model for the music industry and the business side of it to get people to buy nowadays it has to become physical in a different aspect. People aren't interested in just the CD. You have vinyls coming back for that same reason where people want something a little more artistic of their favorite band. You know, you get an out or a vinyl that has some of their artwork included and you're just kind of taking that step one one more yeah i mean uh, and there are several labels independent labels and bands that um you know we obviously are influenced by and uh you know most most of the of my favorite bands when you see them on tour their albums that you would get are have handmade sleeves by the band members and they're you know signed by the band and it's it's a piece of artwork that you get with the actual record and it just kind of makes it feel more intimate and more personal and cool. You get another side of the artist that you're listening to and then it's like, okay, now I can see where their brain is in another level, in another dimension really, because music is one side and then you have a more visual realm too. Yes, yeah, and that's really cool. And that's sort of what we try to do. We're, you know, we're, you know weirdo artist people so we like to obviously right yeah yeah, yeah. The, the weird awesome weird masks here. awesome masks by greg hildebrandt here <laughs> i don't but think they have much to say but. they don't but they're they're very they're very good uh, support <laughs> for me here and they they keep me company when i get lonely but but yeah it's just it's all about art and and put something really interesting to visualize with what you're listening to yeah cool cool so you have a new project now, actually, right? I do. The Bullhive? Just, yeah. Just Bullhive, not the Bullhive. Yeah, yeah. it's just called Bullhive, and uh, it's uh, Brian White and, on drums and Joe Schrock on bass, and I play guitar, and um, yeah, it's been really fun. Uh, both the guys that are in the band with me, we've all been playing music for a long time around this area and became friends uh, from our bands playing shows together throughout the years. and decided to start a project up and it's been a lot of fun and, and you have a new album we do uh coming out really soon uh probably within the next month or two we'll have uh, our first release uh, come out and you know hopefully everyone likes it my name is adam gundrum and i am going to make art out of my junk mail You can keep up with Adam's work by checking out his Facebook pages listed below. And you can listen to a few tracks off the new Bullhive album on Spotify and iTunes. Now let's take a look at some of the events happening in the area. Well, that's some interesting stuff. Again, from Brant Gerald, our man tending to art here at RTC. Thank him for that interview. Now, next up, we've got Tim Wagner. 
He's talking about all the great things happening in this community. You know, we just had the Queen pageant here for Miss Fulton County. And of course, the Fulton County Fair had lots to highlight, including the tractor pull. Let's take a look. I'm Tim Wagner with RTC TV4, and this is your Regional Roundup. Fair week in Fulton County, and that means the crowning of a new queen, fun with animal friends, and some automotive destruction. Okay, we will now announce the awards for Miss Fulton County, but first Reagan is going to come up and give our top sponsor award. A couple years ago, oh. is this stuff okay. <laughs> A couple years ago, we decided to give the top sponsor award. There used to just be like a flat sponsorship fee. Um, but we decided to let these girls go out and raise money to support the fair board. And this year, these five girls raised close to $1,600, just the five of them. And this year, I'm honored to give this award to contestant number three, Miss Emily Tyler. There's a little bag over there. Oh, well. You have an award. It's over there somewhere. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. So our second award is Miss Photogenic, and she was chosen by the judges. And this award goes to contestant number five, Brittany Walker. The next award is the Professional Wear Award. And this award goes to contestant number two, Sydney Scobie. Amanda Hotel. Oh. Professional wear? Yeah, they have it out of order. Okay. Say sorry, it was formal wear. Oh, okay. Scobie. So formal wear winner was Sid Scobie. <laughs> And then the professional wear winner was a contestant number one, Amanda Heltzel. The award for Miss Congeniality is chosen by the contestants. Uh, Miss Congeniality is characterized as a contestant who reflects the respect and admiration of the delegates' peers who voted for her as the most congeal, charismatic, and inspirational participant. In the 2017 Miss Congeniality is your contestant number three, Emily Tyler. All right, it is now time to announce our first runner-up. And our first runner-up this evening is contestant number four, Adriana Day. And lastly, our 2017 Miss Fulton County is contestant number one, Amanda Heltzel. This is the wall where champions are crowned, and now we have new champions. Boy, 
You got to see right there. That's a Clinton, Michigan girl. man. Okay. A girl that's never had pigs. If it was a sow, it would have had pigs. Yes. Okay. Barrel, what's that mean? A boy. Automotive carnage takes place out on the old dirt track. Boys, I hope we're not needed, but glad Thank you got your flagman out there, Jeff Babu. Glad you got your pants on this Kyle time. Boston, and who's the other flagman you got tonight? Great report there by Tim. Next up, we have Out and About with our summer interns, Alex Stearns from Argus and Becky Malco, a Rochester High School graduate. They attended Camp We Can for a day and had a lot of fun with the folks, the volunteers, the kids, everybody. So uh, let's take a look. Hello, and welcome back to the Out and About segment in RTC TV4. This week, we visited the Geneva Center and checked out Camp We Can. Despite the rain, they still had a lot of fun. Let's check it out. Hello and welcome. I'm here with Tom Butler. How are you today? I'm great, thank you. Uh, I have a few questions. We are here at Camp We Can, and I was just wondering what got you involved with Camp We Can? Oh, gee whiz. Um, I don't know. I, I always tell people I was at the um, the right place at the right time, and I just got asked to help one year driving the tram. Uh, and then I was a head counselor, I'm a board member, and I've been involved, I don't know, about eight years now. Okay, that's awesome. That's really awesome. What's your favorite part about Camp We Can? Um, I got several things. I enjoy watching the campers come out because a lot of them don't get to experience um, the things we offer here at Camp We Can. Another thing I really like seeing is the high school and middle school counselors interact. You'll, you'll see the, the star of the football team getting in the dirt and playing with one of the campers and it's just um, it, it's heartwarming to see good kids doing good things. And I notice you're a nice little wig on here. What is your job and what are your responsibilities at Camp We Can this um, year? This year, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a board member, so this is what the board members are wearing. Uh, we're kind of interacting. Uh, the head counselors are in thing costumes. They have the blue wigs and the, and the thing shirts. So uh, every year, there's a different theme. Last year, it was Disney. We've done a, a, a zoo theme. We've done a farm scene. We've done a race day. Um, so it changes every year. So. Well, thank you. I hope you enjoy Camp We Can. Thanks oh, for talking with us. Great. Hello thank and welcome. You. I'm here with Jody Simpson. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. Let's get started by just talking a little bit about Camp We Can. All right, Camp. Uh, this is our 15th year for Camp We Can. Um, we're having a little issue today with the rain, but you know what? It's making it great. Everybody's having fun. Nobody's getting wet. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. We're not going to. It'll be fine. Um, camp was started in 2003 with eight campers. This year we have a hundred campers. So we have a very large crew coming in today. What is your theme for this year? Our theme is Dr. Seuss. As you can tell, I am the cat in the hat. <laughs> and you look adorable doing it. Thank you. <laughs> what is getting all of this put together and getting volunteers, how did, what does that entail? What do you have to do for that? Um, we have a board of 21 volunteers. Um, it's a year-round process. 
without the whole board and all the volunteers, this would never take place. Yeah. So. Well, you guys have a lot of volunteers, and it looks like everyone's hands on deck, especially with this rain. Uh, you guys are still able to do all your activities, even with the rain, it looks like. How did you manage to get all that arranged? Uh, we have a big tent that we've brought in to cover the rain. Uh, the only activity possibly on hold would be swimming, which unfortunately is one of the big activities for the day. But I think the rain will pass, and we'll be able to get out there and swim still. I so agree. we're good. I agree. Well, thank you so much. I hope you enjoy your day. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming. So appreciate it. I have came across some things here in Whoville today at Camp We Can. Can you introduce yourself? Garth Simpson. And Skyler Farmer. Justin Croy. And how did you guys get involved with Camp We Can? I've been involved with Camp We Can since the beginning. Um, my two aunts and Tina started it, and my cousin was Sid was the reason behind the founding of camp. Um, I got started 11 years ago. Um, I kind of knew the Simpson family from 4-H, and so they brought me in, and I've loved it ever since. Um, I got started uh, at camp as a counselor with the campers, and um, I started, I think, eight years ago now, and so uh, just kind of hung it out, and then uh, we moved to up from there, became a head counselor. So, so what is your guys' job here at Camp We Can? Um, I'm a head counselor and also on the board of Camp We Can. Basically, our responsibilities is to oversee camp from the beginning to the end of camp and everything that transpires during camp. What are some of the activities that the kids are doing out here today? So our kids are getting to participate in several different activities. They are um, making picture frames, which is an annual tradition here at camp. Um, they're tie-dyeing different things. Um, they're also doing tumblers for cups. And then once this lovely rain stops, they'll get to take a few rides through the woods. And one of their favorites is swimming at the end. So that will be something else. And then the final question is, what is your favorite part about Camp We Can? Um, something different every year, but it also is the same every year, just being here, seeing the kids, the familiar faces, and everybody that comes back and helps with camp. It's pretty much the same, and the kids, the smiles on their faces, knowing that this is their day, and they get to do what they want, and it's catered to their needs, that's, that's what's best to me, I guess. Absolutely, the same thing. Well, being able to watch the campers and interact with them as they as they enjoy their day, it's special, and I think that's why the majority of us, you know, head counselors and the board, participate in camp weekend. Well, thank you guys for being here with me today. I hope you enjoy your day. Hello, I have already talked to a cat in the hat, a thing, some volunteers, and now I am talking to a walk -it. Yes. Can you introduce yourself? My name is Ann Clark, and I'm one of five walk -its. All right. Well, awesome. Um, so I hear you're in charge of the golf outing that raises money for Camp We Can. Can you tell us a little bit about that? The golf outing is the 28th of July this year. Um, it is the largest fundraiser that we do for camp. Um, last year we had 34 teams, um, raised about 17,000. Um, hoping to do better this year. <laughs> Things are slow coming in right now, so if anybody wants to play golf or sponsor, um, just let me know. But it's a fun day. What do you do here at Camp We Can? Um, I'm on the executive board, so um, I help plan, set up, um, and just kind of anything they need me to do. And what is your favorite part about Camp We Can? Um, the smiles of the campers. They really enjoy it. Well, thank you, and I hope you enjoy your day. Hello, thank I am here with some volunteers. Can you introduce yourself? Sure. Sis Thayer, I've been here 12 years. Beth Brady, this is my second year. My name is Troy Murphy. Tammy Thompson, four years. Awesome. Well, what is your guys' job here at Camp We Can? Um, I'm a golf cart driver. I have a lot of different jobs, but today I'm a golf cart driver. Love it. I'm having Tom, too. <laughs> In the past, I've had, uh, been at station. This year, I'm at uh, golf cart driving. Right. And what is your guys' favorite part about Camp We Can? The kids. Uh, the kids, all the campers are so fun. Everything. You love everything? Everything. Kids are wonderful. It's just a good time. It looks like a great time. I won't keep you guys too long. You go and enjoy your day. Thank you so much. Well, there are lots of great things going on out there at Camp We Can. I want to thank Alex and Becky for doing such a great job covering that, interviewing all the kids and the folks out there. If you can support Camp We Can in any way, please take a moment to do so. Now, I want to thank you out there for watching This Week on 4 here on RTC. We'll be back next week with more stories and highlights right here. Tune in to rtc4.com to watch us online. Thanks so much. 
heard there was a foot race. So I jumped in my motor car and got here as quick as I could to sign up. Is it true? It's true. There is a Fulton Bulldog 5K race on uh, Saturday, August 5th. It starts at 8.30 a.m. and it's up in Fulton Park. Awesome! Now who will my monies be helping? Well, the Fulton Bulldog 5K and Walk previously helped support the Stephen Bruce Matisse Memorial Scholarship. Right. Bruce Matisse received so much support from the community and sponsors that he graciously passed the race on to the cast and cross country team. This year, the proceeds from this race will now benefit the cast and cross country team and Loaves of Love, which is United Methodist Church ministry in our local community. Awesome! So I get to run, and the proceeds benefit young runners coming up in the sport. I love it! Yeah. And so, can I ask where you're actually from? Well, I'm from the UK, mate. Oh, so if he can make it from the UK, you guys can make it too.